clipper ships. Beautiful as a tiered cloud, sky sails set and shrouds twanging, she emerges from the surges that keep running away before day on the low Pacific shore. With the roar of the wind blowing half a gale after, she heels and lunges and buries her bows in the smother, lifting them swiftly and scattering the glistening spray drops from her jibsails with laughter. Her spars are cracking, her royals are half splitting, her lower stunsel booms a better side like bowstrings ready to loose, and the water is roaring into her scuppers, but she still staggers out under a full press of sail, her upper trucks enkindled with the sun in the shafts of rosy flame. Oh, the anchor is up and the sails are set, and it's way Rio, round Cape Stiff and up to Boston, 90 days hauling at ropes. The decks slope and the stays creak as she lurches into every thrust, and a handful of dust and a thirst to make you weep, all we get for being two years away to sea. Topgallant stencil is carried away. Ease the spanker. The anchor is rusted to the deck. Men in short duck trousers, wide-brimmed straw hats with brown mahogany faces, pace up and down, spinning the worn-out yarns they told a year ago. Some are coiling rope, some smoke. Chips is picking oakum near the boats. Ten thousand miles away lies their last port. In the rigging climbs a hairy monkey, and a green parakeet screams at the masthead. In the dead calm of a boiling noonday near the line, she lifts a spread of shining canvas from heel to truck, from jibber jib to ring tail, from moon sails to water sails. Men have hung their washing in the stays so she can get more way on her. She ghosts along before an imperceptible breeze, the sails hanging limp in the cross trees and clashing against the mass. She is a proud white albatross skimming across the ocean, beautiful as a tiered cloud. Oh, Yankee ship comes down the river, blow, boys, blow. Her yards and masts, they shine like silver, blow, my bully boys, blow. She's a crack ship, a dandy clipper, 900 miles from land. She's a down easter from Massachusetts, and she's bound to the Rio Grande. Where are the men who put to sea on her on her first voyage? Some have piled their bones in California among the hides. Some died frozen off the horn in snowstorms. Some slipped down between two graybacks from the yards and joggled suddenly. Still she glistens beautifully, her deck snow white with constant scrubbing as she sweeps into some empty sailless bay which sleeps all day. When the wild ears skip away when she fires her 18-pounder, the sound reverberating about the empty hills. San Francisco, no. San Francisco will not be built for a dozen years to come. Meanwhile, she hums with the tumult of loading. The mutineers even are let out of their irons and flogged and fed. Every day from when the dawn flares up red amid the hills to the hour drops dead to westward, men walk gawkily, balancing on their heads the burden of heavy stiff hides. Now the anchor is up and the sails are set, and it's way Rio. Boston girls are pulling at the ropes. Only three months of trouble yet. Time for us to go. Beautiful as a tiered cloud, she flies out seaward, and on her deck slope and stumble a luckless crowd, the filthy sweepings of the stews. In a week and a day, they spent a year's wages, swilling it away, letting the waste of it run down among the gutters. How are these deadbeats bribed to go? Only the Ann Street runners know. There goes Dutchmen, Sowegians, niggers, crimp-captured greenhorns. They lope up on their deck, some of them already wrecks, so sick they wish they had never been born. Before them all, the old man calls for a bucket of salt water to wash off his shore face. While he is at it, telling them how he'll haze them until they are dead if they try soldiering, but it'll be good grub and easy work if they hand, reap, and steer and heave the lad. His officers are below, rummaging through the men's dunnage, pulling out heavers, prickers, rum bottles, sheath knives, and pistols. On each grizzled, half-cowled face appears something between a sheepish grin, a smirk of fear, a threat of treachery, and the dogged resignation of a brute. But the mate, Bucko Douglas is his name, is the very same that booted three men off the masthead when they were shortening sail in the teeth of a Cape Horn snorter. Two of them fell into the sea, and the third was tossed, still groaning into the water. Only last night the captain stuck his cigar butt into one poor swabber's face for not minding his compass, and gave Jim Baines a taste of rattling hash for coming up on deck with dirty hands. Meanwhile, under a grand spread of canvas, 100 feet from side to side, the ship rides up the parallels. From aloft to the blue stillness of a tropic night crammed with stars, with thunder brewing on the horizon, a mournful echo rises and swells. Oh, my name is Hanging Johnny, hooray, I ho. Oh, my name is Hanging Johnny, so hang, boys, hang. The Great Republic, launched before 30,000 people, a main truck overlooking the high steeple of the town, the eagle at her bows and colors flying. Now in her first and last port is slowly dying. 
She is a charred hulk with toppling masts, seared gilding, and blistered sides. The alert no more slides pertly through the bergs of the horn. The desolate barrens of Staten land where no man was ever born hold her bones. The black ball of lightning that took $80,000 worth of cargo around the world in one quick trip was hurled and ripped to pieces on some uncharted reef or other. The dreadnought disappeared in a hurricane smother of foam. The sovereign of the seas that never furled her topsails for ten years was sheared clean amidships with the bows of an iron steamer as she left her last port. The slave of Ball Eagle cut an unlucky career short when she parted with her anchor and piled up on the parasails of the pirate junks awaiting for every ship that swells out over the horizon. The antelope was caught off the Grand Ladrone in the northeast monsoon. She is gone. The flying cloud, proud as she was of beating every ship that carried the stars and stripes of the St. George's flag, could not race faster than the thunderbolt that fell one day to her deck and turned her to a cloud of flame. Everything burned away but her fame. No more will California hear the little pilgrims' parting cheer. Their crew took to an open boat when their ship was scuttled by a privateer. So they die out year after year. Sometimes the lookout on a great steamer wallowing and thrashing through the heavy seas by night sees far off its swinging light. Beautiful as a tiered cloud, a ghostly clipper ship emerges from the surges that keep running away before day on the low Pacific shore. The upper works are enkindled with the sun into shafts of rosy flame. Swimming like a duck, steering like a fish, easy yet dry, lively yet stiff. She lifts cloud on cloud of crowded stainless sail. She creeps a beam within hail. She dips, she chases, she outpaces like a meddlesome racer, the lumbering tea kettle that keeps her company. Before she fades into the weather quarter, the lookout cries, Holy jiggers, are you the flying Dutchman that you should go two knots to our one? Horsley comes back this answer from the sail. Challenge is our name, America our nation, Bully Waterman our master, and we can beat creation. And it's way, Rio. Fare you well, Rio. Oh, fare you well, my pretty young girl, for we bound to the Rio. <laughs>